hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're doing a little bit of work with an HVLP paint gun. Now truth be told, I have never used an HVLP paint gun. Um, I have never really used a paint gun at all. But when I was in art school many, many, many moons ago, um, I was no stranger to an airbrush and doing airbrush paintings and that sort of thing. And this, I'm assuming, is pretty much the same principle, just on a larger scale. So I think there might be a small learning curve for me, but nothing really serious. So why don't we head over to the bench and I'll show you what I picked up and what we're going to play with today. Well, I'm one of these guys that gets money given to him for his birthday and then it sits around for years in a drawer because I never know what I want. And uh, today I decided to spend some of that money. So I went to Home Depot um, and I picked up this Husky uh, HVLP spray kit. Now, the kit itself comes in this molded plastic case um, it has all of the cleaning tools to clean out your guns with it. Um, it also has the nozzle ends, the male ends for your quarter inch air hose. It comes with your Teflon tape and it also comes with some paint filters, two regulators and four paint cups. Uh, two of them large, two small for smaller touch up jobs. It also comes complete with two spray guns. Now, one of them, that would be this one, is an HVLP gun, and you can tell that because it says HVLP right on the side of it. And the other one is just your conventional type of spray gun. Um, this has a maximum of 50 PSI, whereas your HVLP has a maximum of 40. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to do a little bit of setup with this. Um, the inline regulators, from what I understand, it is much easier to set up your HVLP gun using the uh, an external inline regulator than what it is to mess around with this um, air control valve down here at the bottom. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to place my male ends onto here and I want to place a quick disconnect and a male end onto the regulator so that I can attach it and remove it at ease whenever I feel like using it. So we're going to use some of this supplied Teflon tape or thread tape and when you're applying tape to these threads, you want to make sure that you're going in the direction of the thread. I see a lot of guys online and elsewhere putting it on in the opposite direction of what you're going to be threading something onto it. So all you're really doing is twisting it off of here as you're installing it. So there, you just need a little bit, a couple wraps on there and we are going to take our male end now, our male connector, and we will screw this in place. Just like that. Now our other end already has a connector here and on our female universal end, um, they've already got pipe seal on here. You can see it, this brown substance. So you don't need to add more Teflon tape to that. Um, so you can just screw this in place. We we'll use a double wrench here to make it easier. And we'll screw this in place and then that will be done for this setup. And there you go. There is our inline regulator um, attached and fine Jim Dandy. But as well now on our HVLP sprayer, we will now place uh, the supplied male quarter inch adapter onto the end. Again, with a little bit of Teflon tape, 
being sure to wrap it in the direction of the threads. You also want to make sure that you don't have any of the Teflon tape down here in your opening. And we can just use a wrench. In this case, it's a 5 8 wrench. And we can tighten this in place. All right. So what we're going to do now is I'd like to get this hooked up to my compressor and we'll just test the system here for air leaks to make sure that there are no leaks in the gun or in the uh, reg inline regulator or in my hose connection. Okay, so first things first, we'll pop my blower gun off of there and we'll place our regulator on here just like that and so far no hissing no leaks um, so we're all good there it shows this here at 80 psi it's actually 85 psi and yeah that's what my compressor is showing as well so a little check on the accuracy there and we'll just pop our air gun in here as well and again no leaks um, which is a good thing so this is a maximum pressure of 40 PSI through the gun. So you need to kind of test it. So if you pull the trigger, no air is coming out because I have the regulator shut off. But so we'll open up the valve and turn it up until we get, we're gonna go about 35. And there we go, that is now regulated at 35. Even though it's showing 80, that 80 is coming from the compressor through the hose, but as we pull it through, that it drops right down to 40 and stays there as we set it with the inline regulator. So, I don't feel any leaks, I don't hear any leaks. It's good and solid, it's a good solid connection. I would like to have an inline water filter in this and I will probably be getting one. Um, but for now, this is pretty much the setup of the HVLP. There is one thing that I noticed with this case that when you put the male end on and you go to put your gun back in the case, they didn't allow for any space here for this to, <laughs> to go in for your quick connect. That's kind of silly. So as well, your regulator is the same scenario. This is never going to fit in here. So this will probably live in the storage section of my compressor. And I think what I will be doing is modifying these cases, cutting out a small little notch here um, to accommodate those male ends on the two guns so that they can be stored in the dust-free case. So I think that for the test runs that I will be doing today, I think these large, I think they're 600 cc's, um, I think these are a little excessive for what I need for my test runs. So I will be using these smaller cups Okay, I couldn't stand the fact that I couldn't get this back in here with our male nozzles on, so I modified the case. Just did a little cutout here. Um, the case is thick enough that you can do that and it doesn't compromise any of its strength. So at least now both the conventional gun and the HBLP both fit back in their case to keep them dust free out here in the shop um, with the connection still on. Um, okay, let's, uh, you know what, let's do some testing with this. Well, I'm almost ready to do some test spraying, but one thing I'm going to point out to you guys is that if you have a brand new HVLP gun or a brand new spray gun, like what I have here, you're going to want to completely break it down. And that's what I have done here. I have taken off the nozzle cap. I've pulled out the needle, the spring, all the parts. And let me show you why. I'm just going to reach in here with a cotton swab. And there, can you see the discoloration on that? What that is, is they ship a lot of new tools with oils to prevent them from rusting. You can see it here on my finger. So you are gonna end up spraying this on your work unless you clean all of this up. So we're gonna clean up this gun using some mineral spirits or paint thinner. Um, and then we're just going to fill this smaller cup and spray some paint thinner through the system just to clean out the gun itself 
and the needle and the spray nozzle. So while cleaning out the gun and spraying some uh, Varsol or paint thinner through it, I set up the gun itself. Um, this here, the top knob on the Husky controls your fan pattern. So I think I have it set to a good fan pattern for me. And this second knob down here, this controls the amount of fluid that's going to come through your system, uh, through your paint reservoir, out through your gun. This bottom one here is air control, but I have it full open because I'm controlling it with the regulator that came with the set. And I've also put an inline filter here in the set. Now I know I have an air leak. It's gonna drive me crazy. So once I'm done with this video, I'm gonna have to um, address the air leak that's in my main hose down here. The rest of it is fine. It's just my main hose that is uh, seem to have developed a leak. But either way, I'm going to run the gun at 30 PSI. Um, it's a maximum of 40. 30 seemed to do well with uh, spraying the paint thinner. And I'm going to set up a little spray booth and I'll show you what I've got. So what I've done is I've actually purchased one of these collapsible paint booths. I think this will be perfect for the application that I'm going to be using it for. Um, I'll put a link to it below. But it holds filters in the back. I didn't have the proper size filters, so I had to use a couple of my furnace filters. Um, but as well, on the back, a 20-inch square box fan uh, straps in, and that acts as a suction to pull all the overspray out the back, and it's caught up by the filters. Um, I think it would be a great setup for in here. I've covered up my table saw with a tarp just to help with any overspray. Um, so I also have in here a turntable with some scrap plywood on it so that I can rotate pieces. I have multiple boards like this so that if I'm painting one piece, I can pull that one out and set it aside and put another one in there on a separate turntable circle uh, and spray it and put it off to the side and let it dry. So with that now being said, I guess it's time to take this for a test spin. So that is one coat done. Now, as I understand it, uh, if I seal up these end holes here, just with a piece of tape, that makes this thing a closed system and I won't have to clean it in between coats. Um, it always doesn't hurt to pull off the cap and soak that and give that a good cleaning just to prevent the holes from getting clogged. But in general, as long as I leave it as a closed system, from what I understand, I can leave it and uh, as is in between coats. So I'm going to give this a few coats and uh, I'll get back to you with the results. One other thing that you want to pay attention to though when filling your gun is you want to make sure that you're using a paint strainer to strain out any of the lumps or clumps or whatever that would be in your finish. In my case, I'm using a water-based finish um, that is already a thin enough viscosity that I did not have to thin it. In general, you should be straining the product before you ever put it in your gun. And there you have it. The two gun set from Home Depot, a Husky brand with one HVLP and one conventional sprayer. Guys, this is my first experience with HVLP and I gotta tell you, I hate applying finishes. I really do. It's the one thing in woodworking that I despise. It's such a pain in the neck um, to apply the finish with the brush and then, you know, have to clean your brush and then you wait for it to dry and then you sand it, you wet sand it at like 400 grit and blah, blah, blah. And then you, the next day, because you want to wait for that to cure 24 hours and you put another coat on, etc., etc. I honestly hate it. Um, I've never really had good luck with finishes. I, it, I just have it. I always end up with a run in it and it just frustrates me. 
But I have to tell you that today's experience with HVLP spraying a water-based uh, varnish, I am loving the results. Guys, this stuff came out absolutely beautifully. I love the finish. It's smooth, it's professional, there's no runs. And all I did was spray it onto the projects, overlapping each pass 50% uh, so that, you know, it sort of filled in the seams and let it sit. It dried in like a half an hour, which blew my mind. That was crazy. And then I was able to light sand it with a 400 grit wet sandpaper, wipe it down to get the dust off of it and spray it again. The frames got three coats, the bread box recipe box got three coats, um, and the case, the wood-burned case, that as well got three coats, and every single one of them is flawless. Every single one of them is silky smooth to the touch. Every single one of them is absolutely beautiful, and I absolutely love this. I've, I don't know why I didn't take this step sooner, uh, probably because I was trying to avoid applying a finish. I'm going to say this Wagner pop-up uh, tent kind of thing that's a spray booth. This thing was worth every dime that I spent. Um, in combination with that 20-inch fan behind and the furnace filters in the front sucking out any of the overspray, it was absolutely wonderful. It worked as advertised. It filtered out the overspray. There's no um, overspray on the fan. There's none around my saw on the tarp. There is nothing. It, it worked absolutely fantastic. And uh, I love the fact that it collapses and it takes up the tiniest little space. So that was well worth it. Either way, guys, uh, HVLP, you're going to see a lot more of it on the show, finishing projects. You, I may get some tutorials as I get more experienced, uh, maybe some things that I've learned. Once I get into thinning out paints with, say, uh, oil-based paints and that sort of thing, I'll get back to you with information on that. But honestly, first impression of HVLP, Kenny's got a new uh, favorite thing to do. Now guys, one thing I would suggest with this is that uh, I, I wouldn't set this up personally for one small project, like one small picture frame. In this instant, I had a bread box, the top and the bottom, I, or sorry, the recipe box, the top and the bottom. I had two picture frames and I had the top and the bottom of the wood burn case. So I had several projects to spray made it worth my while to set it up instead of just setting it up for one little small project. So you may want to consider, if you're looking at HVLP, you may want to consider saving up some projects to do with it and then doing all your finishing in one shot. I think that's what I'm going to end up doing. It would make it much easier for me and the cleanup is a lot easier for me that way. Guys, I'm going to put the links below to both this HVLP and conventional gun set as well as the spray booths that I purchased. Um, you, you can't go wrong, at least from what I can see, you really can't go wrong. Make sure you strain your stuff before you put it in the gun, guys. Make sure you clean the gun really well. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. You click the bell and then you're not going to miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. I hope you've enjoyed today's content, guys. I hope you found it informative. Um, I sure as heck learned a lot and this is all new to me, so I'm no expert. But if you have a question, drop it below and I'll do my best to answer. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you're going to consider this for yourself, guys. And more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays.